I'm still still making sure all these keyboard shortcuts and everything works. Um, yeah, offline. Come on, I'm just hiccuping the stream. Uh, let me go ahead and change the channel title. Da -da 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 -da. Docking save. Yeah, thanks, Icebox. Thanks for thanks for doing that. Um, what I do when I do the offline bump like that, I kill the stream. That stops the recording. It splits it so I know what's going on, and then I start the stream back up. Um, that way, in my recordings folder, I have everything kind of split up. It also makes it easy for me to cut the beginning of the stream off where we're just screwing around out of Twitch because um, I can delete that one video out that's our setup, and then we can just start up with a Kerbal Space program or this Kerbal, Kerbal Space Academy. So I should be back now, um, I hope. Yeah, I'm totally back now. So anyways, welcome to Kerbal Space Academy for this evening. It's Thursday, and this week on Thursday we're going to be doing orbital rendezvous and docking. So I'm going to go through a couple things. I'm going to go through how to build a ship that is easy to control while you're RCSing around. I'm going to go through a couple different ways to rendezvous with a target that's in orbit. We're going to be going around Kerbin. works around any sort of body that you may be orbiting around. I don't even know if you can see my hand. And then three, I'm going to go through the docking uh, procedure. So how to get lined up for the dock, what mods may help you with your docking, um, kind of some just basic speeds and stuff like that that I use as frame of reference, kind of rule of thumb sort of stuff. But uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, building a ship first, getting into orbit, rendezvousing with another vessel, a couple different ways, of both a direct rendezvous and a rendezvous where we'll use some home transfer or something like that. And then we will do the actual docking. And that's it. So we're going to try and fit this into a two-hour segment this evening. Um, oh, good Lord. I forgot something. I have forgot something. I will be right back. <laughs> and then we're going to get started. Actually, while the scene changes here, I need to go ahead and uh, get over into our normal... my other career mode and then as that's going I need to go and get something very important can't stream without it um, I don't know what I was thinking main menu let's load up this other save and I should be good Are we good now <laughs> icebox <laughs> Apparently, it thinks that I'm not freaking logged in. Uh, let me get this scene loading, and I will go get my very important important streaming aid. I'm going to be doing this in my interplanetary sandbox mode. And while that loads, be right back. I think we should be good. All right, I totally wish. Wow, the flicker's gone. That's so freaking awesome. I should totally do something like uh, this episode. This is brought to you by... Dun, 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 Dr. Pepper. Not because they pay me, just because I like to drink it. <laughs> You're totally cheating. Telling them... <laughs> what the required streaming aid is. Uh, looks like that's good. <laughs> that looks awesome. <laughs> Should have done it with space as the background. So I need to get logged in over here, it looks like. It's apparently Twitch is telling me I'm not logged in to my own freaking channel. That's not cool. Things like that should be done during setup, Valdez. But Twitch is absolutely freaking terrible about keeping you logged in. So, alrighty, log in and follow Dos Valdez. Yes, follow myself. That is exactly what I want to do. So let me make sure I can type in chat here. My posture is too good. I feel like I'm cut on, cut off by the top of the camera. It still thinks I'm not logged in. So freaking annoying, Twitch. I'm using Chrome, and I want to be able to talk. You must have been hacked. Oh, and then it takes me to some place that's completely... Yes, the front page. Thank you. I totally want to watch 
Zeke stream this evening. No, I've got work to do here. Kerbal Space Academy. All right. Now I think we're good. Now I think I can type in chat so I can respond and make sure I get caught up with y'all. Uh, there we go. We good now. Excellent. Need to edit the channel. Set up. I will get better at this as I do more. Apparently I have to watch a... Is it listening to me? Scotch tape? <laughs> I have to watch an ad for scotch tape on my own channel. Dang it, 3M. This is brought to you by Dr. Pepper, not scotch tape. So anyways... delicious. Uh, Kerbal Space Academy. Orbital rendezvous and docking. That's what we're going to get set up here. And we have a ship already in orbit from a session we did earlier this week. We did a session where we made an interplanetary ship right here. The Duna Space Hag. Wait, was Hag in the channel? Let's see here. Hag, you here? Calling Hag? No Hag. That's all good. Anyways, named after a channel regular called Hag. <laughs> Actually, I forget the rest of his name. Um, we've got a ship up here that's got a couple kerb kerbals in it and some science that we need to return. And so this is going to be our target for docking. Um, we're going to build a ship that can get up here to this. Uh, it's going to come on up here. It's going to grab Bill, Bob, and Jeb. They're going to return and bring back the sweet, sweet science that we collected from Duna. Um, this ship, as you can tell, is not ready for prime time. It is not going to be able to deorbit itself. It has no chutes on it. Even though these are there, those are just for decoration. So, we need to get the science out of here. We're going to build a craft that can go up, get these guys, bring them on home. Uh, maybe we'll leave one there. Maybe one guy will fly it up and then the crew will rotate out or something like that. So, this will be our docking target. This is a terrible docking target. This is a very terrible docking target. We will fix that. I have an idea. Um, I say it's a ter terrible docking target because we want to use these little ports. I don't want to try to teach you to dock using a port that's set up like that. I would rather much have a much easier port like this. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what we got. I think I think we have some ideas here. So let's go on back to the VAB and get this party started. Um, Anybody who's just joining the channel, we are doing Kerbal Space Academy Orbital Rendezvous and Docking for this evening. It's going to be about two hours. Um, we are going to take off. We're going to design a ship first, a ship that's easy to, to control while you're trying to dock. We're going to take off from the launch pad. We're going to rendezvous with that science vessel that's already in orbit, and we're going to retrieve Bill, Bomba, Jeb, and their sweet, sweet science. So, without further ado, we know we're going to need to bring some Kerbals home. This is a great pod for that. The Mark 1 2 command pod has crew capacity of 3, which is awesome. Do we have any other Kerbals to put in it? Desktop, Lingan, and Barmore. I think we'll use Barmore. Alright, good deal. So we do have Kerbals. So let's build a ship first, right? Ship needs control, it needs command input, which is the pod here. It needs fuel. We all know that. It needs. What else does it need? It needs an engine. We know that. Let's go ahead and use the Poodle. I feel like the Poodle doesn't really get enough love. And I am going to install something on that Stein, on that science ship. Um, I am going to install a part that we will leave up there. And it will be a part that looks a lot like this. Let me go get a docking port. That looks cool. Another docking port. That's cool. I'm going to get me one of these structural segments, the little brand adapter. I like it. I like it. I don't think it needs anything else, really. Um, but we do need some command authority on here. Never make a part that I'm going to undock without a probe core of some sort. So we'll put that there. We'll put that there. This is so super simple. On this end, we are going to put a Clampatron Senior. All right, so that's easy peasy. We're going to go up there. We're going to dock. Remember when we looked at that ship, it had a big old Clampatron Senior on the bottom of it. We're going to install this docking adapter on it um, that takes that big old Clampatron and moves it down to just a smaller thingy, uh, the regular size Clampatron. And let me put a couple more things on here, such as some battery power. Like that. 
and a couple solar panels. Since it's got a probe core, I would really like it to have some sort of power generation capabilities. That's fine. 3x symmetry, I'll take it. So anyways, we're going to fly this ship up there. We are going to... Uh, let's see. We are going to dock. Then we're going to leave this part there and take this ship home with our three Kerbals in it while we rotate out the crew. So a couple different things here. Um, let us take this off for now and just leave it here. Because we're going to start by building a simple ship that is easy to control while we're trying to dock it, right? We've already got the main parts. We've got our engine, we've got our fuel, we've got our command, and we've got our docking port. That's all you really need. Let's go ahead and put some power generation capability. Power generation capability. I'm going to go ahead and use these. The RTGs. And I'm going to totally do the whole tuck it in sort of deal. That's fine. Uh, we're That's going to get in the way of our RCS, actually. So let's put it further down. Like, maybe... Maybe like that. That's good. Just kind of sitting off the side. Whatever. Uh, let's see here. Oh, hey, Luis, what's up? In LJAM, what's going on? <laughs> uh, let me... Uh, da -da -da, rendezvous, yes. Naming my kids after Kerbals. Red Burn. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> if I say dupe three thigh... <laughs> Dupe three times and yell beefcakes. I'll follow and view as much as possible. I'll tell you what, maybe at some point during the episode I'll do that. You're going to have to stay around and uh, watch and see if I do it. So anyways, our ship. It's got power generation now. We've got the engine, we've got the fuel, we've got the pod. Let's put some RCS units on it. Ooh, we need RCS as well. Let's put some RCS on here, which looks a lot like propulsion. And that looks a lot like this. And I'm going to go ahead and put this way up here like that. There's a reason for that. Now let's grab our RCS control. Here's a little RCS thruster blocks. I'm going to use 4x symmetry on this. This is very important. When you're designing the ship, 3x symmetry with RCS is not so great. You can use it to control the ship. You'll save one part, but you don't get particularly efficient control out of it. Um, when you use IJKL to move your ship, to translate it around in these directions, the RCS units that are like this in 3x symmetry don't put all of their energy in the direction that you're trying to translate the ship. We can illustrate that by turning on RCS build aid and pushing L on the keyboard there. See, this is going to say every time I try to press L and translate in the right-hand direction, all three of those thrusters are going to fire. This one's going to fire a lot because it's going straight along the L axis, right? We want to go in this direction. It's firing straight against that. But these two are totally screwed up. They're not firing in the direction we want to go, which is the green arrow. This one's firing at a, what would it be, a 45 degree angle like this. And this one's firing at a 45 degree angle like that. That means that we're wasting a lot of fuel. We are pushing it in a direction that we don't want to be going. So when you're building your first ship to dock, I always say use 4x symmetry because check out what that does. 4x symmetry pushes both of those blue lines coming out the side of the RCS thruster in against the direction you want to go. You don't have any wasted thrust. So 4x symmetry, I love it. You just saw me do something else. We turned on RC, RCS build aid and you saw me move this thing around, right? Um, what I was doing was trying to center it. RCS Build Aid is a freaking awesome mod. Link is down in the channel description. I recommend it for building ships. Um, there's a new version that just came out. I just updated it. Uh, 0.5 is the latest version, and you can get the link to the latest version down there in the channel description. But what RCS Build Aid does is it shows how your ship is gonna behave when you're trying to control it with RCS. What that means is if I put the RCS thrusters right here, and I try to press L to translate in the right-hand direction, um, these RCS thrusters are going to fire. You can see that because of the blue lines. My center of mass is up here. And what that means is pushing a force against the center of mass, not directly against it, is going to give us a lever action. Because the center is up here, because we're applying force down here, just like sitting on a seesaw, it's going to make you turn in one direction. And so this RCS build aid tells us we're going to rotate in this direction. That's no bueno, mister. We don't want to do that. We don't want to rotate in that direction every time we tap the RCS to translate. And you can see how terrible it is. I'm going to press K. There's a different direction. 
every single time I tap that button, we're going to get this unintended rotation. What that means is I'm going to line up for my dock like this. Actually, like this looks better, I think. I'm going to line up for docking like this, and every single time that I tap the RCS to try and translate straight up or down, what's actually going to happen is my ship is going to turn like this. And all I want to do is go straight up, but instead of just going straight up, my ship is going to go up and turn. That's a bad thing. I totally don't know if you can even see what's going on there. But uh, we don't want the ship to tumble to do the unexpected or unintended rotation like that. So what we can do, turn on RCS build aid. This is Blizzy's toolbar. If you don't have Blizzy's toolbar, you'll turn it on. You'll just have this little floating icon. You can click on it to, to make it appear. Um, if you have Blizzy's toolbar, you just click on this to get the RCS build aid window here. And by default, it'll come right here. That'll turn on all this stuff. Press IJKL to see how your rotation is. Let's fix it in the L direction. So I just pressed L on my keyboard and I'm gonna grab this little RCS thruster and move it and you can see the closer I get that RCS thruster to the center of mass the better and we want to move it up until that unintended rotation completely disappears so you can see now with the positioning of that thruster we've got this ship moving only in this direction whenever we want to translate that way same thing if I press K I just pressed K when we want to translate up um, it's only going to go in this direction. Left, same story. Every way we go, we have no unintended rotation. That's freaking huge. In two of this four-directional thrust and two of the unidirectional ones. Uh, on this one, we're good to go. Um, because I'm using 4x symmetry, you may have seen me build landers before where you have a central core and then parts on the side and, and bilateral symmetry, basically one on either side, like a Y-wing bomber sort of setup. Um, with this, since I'm just keeping it simple and using it straight 4x symmetry, we're good to go. We don't have to worry about it. So this ship, when its center of mass is right there, should be really easy for us to control. That's excellent. Now wait, what's going to happen? Remember we had this payload. When I put the payload on, what's it going to do to the center of mass? It moved the center of mass up. Actually, let me translate in a different direction. So look what this is going to mean. You can, you can expect what's going to happen once you get to space just by looking at what RCS build aid is telling you here. When I take this payload, which was the docking adapter, adap adapter for the science ship, and I add it to the top, see how it moves the center of mass? The center of mass goes up a little bit. That means that when this payload is attached, we're going to get a really thin unintended rotation, right? And when we get rid of the payload, we're not going to have that unintended rotation before. What could we do? If I put this thing up here, I could attach the payload to the front of this craft, and then I could grab my little build aid thing, or grab my little thruster block, and move it up so that when I have the payload, put it a little too high, when I have the payload, I get no unintended rotation, right? What does that mean? That means when I undock the payload, our center of mass is gonna change, and undocked, we're going to have a little bit of rotation. You can leave that up to your own mission profile. Um, if you have a payload that's going to be really complex to dock somewhere, you might want to tune your craft so that it's perfectly balanced when it's trying to do that initial docking to get rid of the payload. And then, if it's not quite as balanced after you've delivered the payload, that's okay. Um, if you're designing a craft that doesn't carry a payload up there, it's just going to be used for crew transfers or refueling or something like that. Maybe you want to design it so that it's always uh, it's always balanced when it has a payload, doesn't have a payload, or whatever. That's up to your own mission profile. Uh, just keep in mind here, adding a payload up here changes the behavior of this craft. So for now, we're going to go ahead and leave it like that and see how it goes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and strut that in just because we like struts. Let's see if 4x symmetry blocks any hatches. I don't think that it should. Uh, I think that that's okay. I think we're good. I don't think that hatch is going to be blocked. Um, I'll take things I learn playing Kerbal Space Program for 500, please, Alex. Something that unintentionally blocks a hatch is such a freaking pain. Uh, let's also put some, uh, since we're installing this cargo, let's put some lights on it. There's a general area kind of work light, and I'm also going to put a spotlight on there. Let me do that a little bit. Let's put a spotlight for long distance. Excelente. That looks good. Anything else? Let's do a checklist. Uh, the way we do it in my channel, <laughs> 
I may have forgot something since this is Kerbal Space Academy. You should be paying attention. Um, if I forgot something, tell me now. I'm going to check the chat. Um, I'm going to go through the checklist myself, and while I'm going through it, be typing something over there if you've noticed me move, missing anything, and uh, then we will see if we forgot anything. But I do enlist the help of the stream to see if we're missing anything. I've got command, I've got fuel, I've got main engine, I've got RCS control, I've got RCS to carry, I've got power generation, I've got the docking port, I've got the lighting, and I've got the cargo securely attached. Did I miss anything? RCS on the tug. Fuel types to the RCS thrusters. Uh, no, you don't need fuel type fuel pipes to the RCS thrusters. The RCS can pull from anywhere. Um, that's a special thing in Kerbal Space Program. The regular engines, yes, there are special rules about how they pull their fuel. RCS will pull fuel anywhere from the ship most of the time. You don't have to worry about running fuel pipes. Hope that answered that question. Uh, rescue the Corbels. Lax Core and Green Ember. 10 points to Lax Corridor and Green Ember Puff. <laughs> that's disgusting. Uh, parachutes, yes, that seems quite, quite important. Let's put a couple parachutes on here. Excellent catch. <laughs> Good thing I have the stream here to help me out. Uh, we'll use these radial shoots, just the stock radial shoots. That is an outstanding catch. <laughs> it may take more parachutes than that. Um, maybe what I should do is put four parachutes in symmetry like this. And uh, you know something? We could also put uh, landing legs on it. Just because. Why not? Oh yeah, those are the ones that go up. And I'll have them tuck against a chute like that. Let's see how it looks when they deploy. That looks good. That looks good. Let's check how that affected our uh, RCS balance. Actually, I put the chutes a little high and I put the legs a little low, so it did not significantly affect our RCS balance. Let's check it without the payload. We're fine. I'm fine with that right there. All right. Anything else needs four? Okay, I got four. Let me check the chat. Uh, I missed a little bit here. You understood everything until I said what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> See, probe core needs RCS stuff. Da -da 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 -da. Oh no, Luis, on the uh, on the payload, that is going to be a dumb payload. I put the docking or I put the uh, probe core there, just because it's a superstition of mine. There used to be an old bug in KSP with, which, which would keep you from decoupling docking nodes if one of the parts didn't have a probe core. So for my own purposes, unless it's a lifter stage, everything that I'm going to attach or detach has its own probe core. Um, that's just a hard and fast rule that I've imposed upon myself playing KSP. Let me catch the rest of the stuff here. Uh, Multi-thrust close to the unit thrust makes me five. Yes, that is a good thing. For the simplicity of this, I'll do that on the next ship, Luis. Um, that is a cool trick that we do like to use on our little landers when we're trying to keep the part count low. Da -da -da -da. Jam, if you uh, if you hang out, I'll, I'll show what Lewis was saying there. What's up, corn chips? Da -da 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 -da. Parachute. Yes, we got the parachutes. Also parachutes. Battery packs for the main unit. Um, I've got two RTGs, so I'm not going to worry about that. There's a little bit of battery storage. Yeah, we've got 150 battery storage in the, uh, in the pod there, so we won't worry about that. Uh, landing gear, we got it. <laughs> Check the crew. Submitted denied. Remind me right before we launch it. We still need to do a lifter. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Those are connected. When you land, it'll flip upside down. The payload at the top. Introverted blurtus. I think I got that right. Introvert, introvert blurts. Um, that payload is going to be delivered to a science vessel that's waiting in orbit. Um, more mass on the bottom will have reduced the effect. You are correct. Parachutes will make it flip. I don't, well, let's see. That's an excellent That's an excellent thing to look at. That is a very, very good point. Let's have a look. So when we're landing, we're gonna have nothing there, and this fuel tank's gonna be empty. So you can see my center of mass is still below my chute attachment points. So if this tank is empty, when I land, we will hang from the parachutes just barely. Um, 
that's an excellent point. You That's definitely something you should look for. I would feel more comfortable if these four chutes were a little bit higher. Let's see if we can get them higher without totally screwing with our ship. Now we're blocking the ladder a little bit. We're blocking the door a little bit. But that's okay. So when we come down and we're empty of fuel in the main tank here, um, our center of mass will be there. Our chutes will be there. So we will hang from those chutes. That was an excellent freaking point. Uh, who made it? Introvert Blurts. Thanks for putting that over there in the chat. That is definitely something to look for. Let's fill this back up. There we go. We have a little bit of... Let's see here. Yes. That is good balance in all of our commanded axes. I like it. Forward, backward, left, right. The struts reattached. This ship is good to go for docking. Um, ooh. Ooh. Nobody caught this one. Where is my friend, the Kerbal Engineer? I will... <laughs> if we were just totally... One thing I don't like about this pod is the things don't really attach very well. Like, the, the, the mesh on the top of it is kind of wonky. So we'll just put that right there. Wow, that's actually a pretty good thrust to weight. And... Delta V. 2240 Delta V with a 1.24 thrust to weight. This guy could be his own kicker stage. That gives us a lot of leeway for doing that rendezvous, um, which we may need. So let's see here. Da -da -da, docking adapters. Hang out as long as you can stay awake. <laughs> I think that we're good. Submitted, I caught that on the uh, more mass on the bottom. Um, that is exactly correct. We could spend a lot more time making it so that the center of mass doesn't change or balances out this. We could also cut this tank in half so we could pump ballast back and forth with fuel. Um, there's a lot more advanced concepts we could do. Maybe what I should do is put together kind of a 200 level, like advanced ship balancing sort of deal. But uh, for anybody that's just joining us, we've designed a ship. It is going to deliver this payload to an orbital science ship that's returned from Duna. It's basically a docking adapter. And then it's going to bring our three Kerbals home, Bill, Bob, and Jeb. Um, so what we need to do is get this ship with its payload into orbit now. So let's work on that. I'm going to go ahead and switch Kerbal Engineer. It's in atmosphere mode. Remember, switch Kerbal Engineer to atmosphere mode before you start building your lifter stage. We need a kicker. Our orbital insertion stage, they usually look like this. We're going to put a big old Rocco Max adapter here. Like that. We're going to put a big old fuel tank there. And we are going to use a skipper. Like that. What's that give us? That gives us 1.68 thrust to weight with 1,600 meters per second of delta V. Hot diggity dog. That is just fine for a kicker stage. Let us also build the lifter. So I typically do my things in three stages, minus the boosters. Um, I've got the payload at the very top. I've got the kicker stage or the orbital insertion stage. And I've got the uh, lifter. The lifter gets you up out of the atmosphere. The orbital insertion, insertion stage kicker gets you going around the planet. And then the payload self-suffices itself to deliver to the uh, to the rest of the place. So let's go ahead and put... <laughs> to deliver to the rest of the place. To deliver to your target, whatever you're trying to rendezvous with. So we'll put that guy there. I wonder if a mainsail is going to do it for us. And then we're going to do our little overheat fix, which is put a baby tank at the bottom. And we're going to grab a mainsail. How are we doing? 177 on the launch pad. Wow, 4,800 Delta V total. That's a lot. That's a lot more than we need. We can actually put this as a half tank here. 4473, that's excellent. That is absolutely excellent. So check out our craft, right? I'm not going to go too far into it. Uh, we do other Kerbal Space Academy sessions on a lifter design, getting into orbits, kind of getting into orbit 101. Um, but I'll go over it for this ship just because it doesn't hurt to repeat it. On the launch pad, we're looking at Kerbal Engineer here. Engineer here. Link is down in the channel description. You should definitely check it out. I don't build rockets without it. It's freaking awesome. But here's what it shows us. Um, the Delta V in the first stage is just about 2,000 with a 1.9 thrust to weight. When we launch a rocket, the first stage should always be more than 1.7. You can get to space if you have less than 1.7 when you're sitting on the pad. It just won't be the most efficient launch. You'll waste a lot of time fighting against gravity as opposed to getting the heck out of Dodge and into orbit. Um, so that's good to go. 1.7 a launch pad for the first lifter stage. The kicker stage, 
2.18, that's a really good thrust to weight on that kicker stage, and 957 delta V. That should help us get not only out of the atmosphere, but most of the way towards a circular orbit. Then our actual ship here, we're going to be using it to finish its orbit and do the rendezvous. Um, it's got 1500 delta V with a 1.24. That's also good. If that number was a lot lower, if that number was like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, You'll see that a lot when you're using nuclear engines or some of the smaller engines. Um, the Poodle recently got rebalanced, so it's freaking awesome. Uh, it works fine for this. Um, but if that number was too low, we wouldn't be able to orbitally insert ourselves. Um, but here's what we're looking for. At least 1.7 thrust weight on the pad. At least 1.7 to 2.0 for the kicker stage, the insertion stage. And this thrust weight is fine at least 1.0 for our space operations. So that's what we're looking at here. We're also looking at the total amount of delta V. It takes about 4,500 to get to orbit. We say 4473 here. We have more than 4473 because this just shows us at sea level. And as we get up out of the soupy atmosphere, we're going to get more and more efficiency out of that fuel. But this rocket right here, I think we'll go to space. I've been known to be wrong though. So let's stage it correctly. You go there, you go there. Four shoots go last. Yeah, okay, make a new stage and then drag it into its own place. Four shoots go last. Bottom engine fires, check. Pop that, kicker engine fires, check. Pop that, ship engine fires. Well, I <laughs> said that backwards. Pop that, ship engine fires, check. Rescue the Kerbal with shoots. Let's put some launch clamp on here, and I will check chat to see if I have glazed over anything. 4800 Delta V. Remember, we have we have plenty of fuel, Luis, because this is atmospheric mode. Um, if we click compact and we turn it off atmospheric, we've actually got 5580. That ship, the delivery ship and the rescue ship, carries 2240 Delta V when it's in vacuum. That engine's really not going to fire till the ship is in vacuum. So instead of the 1551 number you see there, we're actually going to have 2240 when we get up there. Um, that is a very important thing, but we're going to have a lot more fuel than we need for these maneuvers. Let's see if I missed anything else. Deb Refund. I like Deb Refund. Um, I've done a lot of communication with the maker of Deb Refund, Vinden. Um, he's a cool guy. I'm actually idling in his IRC channel right now. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with stage recovery. I can really only talk about Deb Refund, but Deb Refund does exactly what I want. It's so freaking cool. Um, try them both out. See which one you like more. Uh, but I am a, personally a fan of Deb Recovery. Uh, da -da -da -da. Hey, K9, welcome. What's going on? We're doing uh, orbital rendezvous and docking, delivering some parts and rescuing some, Q f some crew from the science ship we sent to Duna the other day. Slapping your rockets on, shooting it to the stars. That totally works, too. <laughs> All right, so let's see what we get. I need to fix that camera so it doesn't cut off the top of my hat, or I need to talk from further back here, don't I? Anyways, we're learning. We're learning. Uh, title for the craft. This will be the, uh... I'm gonna call it the, uh... Huh. Boring name ship, the 101. <laughs> we'll just do the, uh... The Rendock. Mark 1. <laughs> Good enough. Making up ship names is not my forte. If you have a better ship name, post it in the chat. We can always rename it. So let's save that. Let's fix the staging here. Let's go ahead and click save. I totally just got to follow in my earphones, but I will have to look over there to see if I can catch it. <laughs> uh, is the arm vacuum? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the arm holding up the rocket necessary? What are the benefits? Um, the same me express. Call it Fapple. Thanks, Unidir. <laughs> uh, da -da. Is the arm holding the rocket up necessary? For this rocket, probably not. It's got a very flat base, um, and as long as we didn't let it sit on the launch pad for a long time, it probably wouldn't topple over. Um, I just put it there. Their launch stability enhancers, they enhance the stability of the launch. You don't have to have it, uh, but for this rocket, I'm just putting it on there, mostly because it's really tall and it's just one more thing to put on. So let's go ahead and it also does some other things, like it provides electric charge. That sort of stuff. Plus, it gives you a little bit more realistic looking thing. So, I'm gonna click save. I'm gonna kick launch. <laughs> Intentionally shooting a crash landing into the moon. The KSA Docker? That's not bad. I'll do that, Harry. <laughs> I have a chat full of names. <laughs> I should just pick somebody's names. 
I'll go ahead and do it the KSA Docker Mark I renamed vessel. Kerbal Space Academy Docker Mark I. Thanks for the suggestion there. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oops. These idiots sneak into the craft. Oh, back to the launch. Somebody was supposed to remind me. Maybe you did and I just didn't look at the chat. My bad. Let me go get those extra guys out. Let's see here. Kerbal Engineer, I need to figure out why that keeps moving over there. Guys in the craft. You there. Barmore is going to do the flying. He needs two empty seats because Bill, Bob, and Jed are coming home. Barmar will stay on station with the uh, science vessel. And uh, if we ever need to put more crew up there, maybe we will space plane them up there or something. But just Barmar is going to go to space. Let's click save. <laughs> KSA Docker Mark 1. Save. Launch. All right. Let's put this thing to space. And thanks, Harry Bucket, for the... Uh, for the name of the ship there. I appreciate it. While the scene loads, we'll get more delicious, Dr. Pepper. So, I know y'all, if you're regulars of the channel, you've seen me do direct orbital rendezvous before. Um, I'm not going to do direct orbital rendezvous here. I'm going to do a home and transfer first. So, we've got a target. It's in orbit. This guy right here, the Duna Space Hag, is orbiting at about 95 kilometers. We want to rendezvous with it. So let's go ahead and start by getting ourselves into a stable orbit without worrying about where the Duna Space Hag is right now. Uh, what we'll do for the second launch, we'll do a direct rendezvous, um, which basically says go straight to space and meet the ship. For this one, we're just going to do a home and transfer to do our sink here. This is the very basic docking maneuver. Docking maneuver. This is the very basic rendezvous maneuver. So we'll go ahead, SAS engage, panel lock, throttle up. Watch old Kerbal Engineer here, and let's go to space. So here we are, 2.0 from the liftoff. That's a little bit much. I want to throttle down until that says 1.7. Um, typical launch profile. We leave the we leave the launch pad with 1.7. We are going to hit our first checkpoint at 5,000 meters. 5,000 meters, we want to be going 150 meters per second. That's so that we're not fighting against the atmosphere too much. It's 150, 160. Um, it's not like this is rocket science. We just got to get it close enough. Um, basically, we don't want to be going 250 at 5,000 meters, and we don't want to be going 50 at 5,000 meters. 150, 160 range is what we want for our launch profile. So, we're just going straight up here. Old Barmore sitting in the capsule, driving it by himself. Uh, we will pass 5,000 meters. 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. 162 meters is what I saw when I looked down. That's good. If you make the uh, launch pad say 1.7 when you take off, you'll usually get that. Uh, unless you have to stage before then. Next checkpoint, 10,000 meters. We want to be going 250 to 260. Um, we'll check that. That's again, we don't want to be going too fast so that we're spending a lot of fuel fighting against the air. Could we do it in this rocket? Yeah. There's 10. We were going 270 a little bit too fast. Now I'm going to do my gravity turn. That means at 10,000 meters, I'm just going to start leaning over here to 90 degrees on the nav ball and I'm just gonna pull that orbit over can you just flip it and go like <laughs> do that yeah you can do that um, there's our first stage let's launch the kicker and I'm just pointing 45 degrees next checkpoint watch Kerbal Engineer here I've got the Apo app set at the top of the Kerbal Engineer when that gets to 50 I need to turn and burn um, basically, we're trying to get out of the soup right now. You can see the atmosphere gauge here. We're still in the atmosphere. We don't want to spend a lot of time flying horizontally through the atmosphere. We want to get up out of the atmosphere and then start to miss the planet. Uh, so I'm just burning this until we get an apoapse of 50. And there's 50. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn and burn. So I clicked on this and I set it to orbit mode and I burn straight with my orbit here. And I'm going to do that until the apoapse here changes to 75. So just burning straight with the orbit, putting a lot of that energy into going around the planet. Look at that. How about that? That almost gave us the exact apoapse we needed. So let's ditch the kicker stage, get that 75 kilometer apoapse, kill it. 
We're in really thin atmosphere, so see how that apoapsis is slowly coming down? Not that big of a deal, because once you get up above 50, it's not going to drag you down that much. Um, actually, when you get above 40, it's not going to drag you down that much. Let's plan a circularization node. Here I pressed M, I come over to my map screen, I click on apoapsis. I give it prograde velocity, don't touch anything except prograde, until I get a periapsis. See the periapsis has appeared. I can click on the periapsis so that it sticks and then I can continue dragging until that number says 75. So th there is roughly 75. Let's go ahead and give it some radial in. And I'm going to have to do this quick. That's 66, more delta V, 74, 75, close enough. What's our burn going to be? Minute 41, I better burn right freaking now. So let's go ahead and light this engine up. So, I took the time to plan the node there, and that means I'm not going to get a perfectly circular orbit. Um, because the estimated burn was a minute and 30, and I only had T minus 30 seconds left. So, 30 seconds of my burn is going to be before the node, 60 seconds of the burn is going to be after the node, and uh, that means we're not going to have an exactly circular orbit, but it will be an orbit, it will count, it will be good enough for government work. <laughs> Give me Dr. Pepper. <laughs> All right, so just doing this burn here while we drink delicious Dr. Pepper. Let's see here. Sounds like I just got to follow. I need something that pops the follow up on my screen as soon as it goes ringly boop in my headset. Um, to call off the follow, I've got to watch the stream. Unhi Deer. Unhi Deer, thanks for the follow. And I missed somebody earlier. I don't know who it was. I apologize. Um, I'm still kind of getting set up with this. So sometimes I miss those things. I will see if I can go back and find it. So let me get into orbit. Then I'll check the chat, see where we are. Just continuing that burn. Now we're plus 30 past the node. That's changing quite a bit. I'm going to burn up. Now I'm going to burn straight. There is an orbit. Wow, 82 to 69. Not great. Not great, Valdez. Too much talking. Not enough fixing your orbit. What's coming up next? The periaps. All right. I'm just going to trim the orbit here by burning straight up. And what that does is it's going to raise my periaps while lowering my apoaps. Pop. There we go. 7378. Now I'm going to burn retrograde to circularize the orbit. Hey, Mr. Handman, thanks for the follow. I totally caught you over there looking at my stream. Let's see here. Periaps, 73. Apoaps, I'm just going to go ahead and put it at 75. 73. 73. I totally meant to do that. <laughs> so anyways. Now we've got our ship up here. We've got 947 Delta V to play with. We've got... Uh, da -da 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 -da, Barmore flying it. And we've got a... Good enough orbit right there at 73-ish on both sides. What we need to do is rendezvous with the Duna Space Hag. So, it's almost on the other side of the planet from us because we launched when it was on the other side of the planet. What we need to do is play around until the Duna Space Hag is at a place where we can actually meet up with it. So, the way orbits work, right? It's the same as NASCAR, it's the same as F1. You want to go faster, you get on the inside of the track, right? You turn you take the curve going on the you take the curve going on the inside of the track. If you can get the inside, you can go faster than the guy who's stuck on the outside. Um, I throw both NASCAR and F1 in there since we have a diverse audience. Um, although there's only really one inside of the track to NASCAR, so it's not that complicated. But since I'm on the inside of the track, check out my let's focus on Kerbin. Since I'm on the inside of the track here, my orbit's going to be going faster, right? I'm going to go around the planet faster than the guy, the Duna Space Hag, that's on the outside of the planet. What that means is I'm slowly but surely going to catch up with him, right? Imagine NASCAR, where one car is forced to drive on the very outside, outside up against the wall. One car is perfectly on the inside the entire time. They're both going the same speed. doesn't work that way with orbits, but just bear with me. Um, they're both going about the same speed. The one on the inside will go a lot faster than the one on the outside. And that's what's going to happen here, um, roughly. Well, they're not going the same speed. We'll get to that. The one on the inside with the lower orbit is going to catch up to the one on the outside. How long do we need to orbit before that's going to happen? Here's what we do. 
let's come around over to our orbit and see if I can't get a place where it's going to let me plan a maneuver node. Apparently it's not going to let me plan a maneuver node. Thanks, KSP. Huh. All right. Is it going to let me plan a maneuver node now? This happens every now and then. I don't know why. It will not let me plan a maneuver node. I'm sure people have got that. That's no bueno. Anyways, if, it, if that ever happens, go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> wow, I can't click on anything. Like, all left-clicking is suspended in the scene. <sighs> Let me try to jiggle the handle. It's like you're trying to do things and you can't. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> it's like a song in a language you don't speak or understand. I mean, but it's... Check it out. I, I want to make this accessible to people, right? Let's go to the map. You know... Wow, that's not the right place. That's also not the right place. I probably just throttled up. I did just throttle up. So annoying. What I want to do is focus on Kerbin. The guy on the inside's gonna go... Oops, and suborbital, apparently. The guy on the inside's gonna go faster. He's gonna catch up with the guy on the outside. You're just running on the inside of the high school track, right? And if you're trying to do a long-distance race, however many meters, a 400 meter is one time around, I think. Didn't run a lot of track in my days. Um, you want to run on the inside of the track, not the outside of the track. I'm just fixing the error that I did when I accidentally pressed that button. Let's get that periaps back up there. 70 by 73. Yeah, I screwed it up because I hit the shift key. That's okay. So anyways, can I plan a maneuver node yet? No. What I need to do to fix that, unfortunately, is hop back to the Space Center right, right quick. So I'm going to quick save. I'm going to go to the Space Center. Then I'm going to use the tracking station to get back to the ship. Stupid Kerbal tricks. It's just uh, a bug in the game. Every now and then you lose the capability to click on an orbit to make a new orbit. Usually if you come back here... Maneuver node, not make a new orbit. <laughs> Usually if you come back here and then you return to the ship, it fixes it. Don't ask me why. I'm glad we're getting new space plane parts, though. Uh, da, 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 the KSA Docker Mark I. Fly. Please let me plan a node now. And here is the Docker. Excellent. Press M to get to the map mode. Survey says, now we can plan maneuver nodes. ay ay ay. Three minutes up. I'm going to go ahead and plan it over here. And... Before I get into that, let me check the chat and see if I've missed any questions so far. So let's see here. Choo -choo 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 -choo. Wow, a lot of stuff going on. <sighs> Naming ships, yes. Got that. D Studios, I am going to do a stream on Space Planes. Uh, it will probably be Fridays or Saturdays. I'm not sure on that. But I do plan on doing a stream on Space Plane Design and, and getting a simple Space Plane into, into space. Uh, let's see here. Crashing things. Yes. Give me Dr. Pepper. Sorry, I can't. I can only stream you images. Same career mode as yesterday. Yes, I am playing in our... Uh, no, this is not career mode. This is our sandbox mode for uh, Kerbal Space Academy when we put the uh, space hag that went out to Duna in. So this is a different save. I will do a space plane construction class. I got that one. The follow train. Choo-choo. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sorbez. Hey, what's up, Traincom? Welcome. Thanks for joining us for the uh, Kerbal Space thing tonight, Kerbal Space Academy. Totally meant to do that. <laughs> yes, we will do that. You can get to Space Plane without making it too complex. Zero cents, NASCAR, outside car goes faster because it has to turn less, so it gets... <laughs> Missed the launch. Did you remember to check the crew? Yes, submitted tonight. I did remember to check the crew. So... Um, I got caught up with chat there. Didn't look like there were any questions that I had missed. Let's plan this node. The Space Hag is in orbit at a 95 kilometer-ish orbit. Is it circular? It's going to be a lot easier to rendezvous with, with if it's circular, but let's go ahead and say increase... Eh, we'll click it first. I clicked on the Space Hag. I did set as the target. Its orbit turns green, and we can see the parameters. It's apparently orbiting at 84 by 100. That's not great. That's actually going to make it more difficult to rendezvous with. Um, 
what we want to do since we're trying to keep this simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the space hag. I'm going to circularize that orbit right at 100,000 meters because I want to keep this simple for the first uh, the first kind of session here. So let's make the space hag have a circular orbit. Here's the space hag. We'll fire up those nukes. This would be a refresher for anybody who uh, needs to remember how to circularize their orbits. We're on the space hag. I'm going to set a node at the apoapse, which is 100. Add a maneuver. Click on the periapse. Come on. Click on the periapse so that it sticks. Thank you. Apparently it's stuck both of them. Oh man, how annoying. We're just going to have to do it this way. So I'll hover over it. All right, so it's at 84 right now. Interesting. They both have an 84. That's okay. And I'm going to burn a little bit. Prograde until I get 100. So now I've got a 97 by whatever that number is. <laughs> a 97 by 100. So let's just give it a little bit more. That's a 98 by 100. 99.5... 99.8 by 100. Hey, that's good enough, right? There. 99.9, like a used car, by 100. So let's go circularize this dude's orbit right quick. And let's just flip around. Find the prograde mark, or actually find the burn marker. There it is, the little blue thingy. That's one feature I can't wait to have in 2.5 when, when we can see where that is off the nav ball so you don't have to use your electric charge flipping in random directions to find where you're supposed to be burning. Let's go ahead and fast forward on up, 23 minutes, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, lots of farts, nice, yeah right, you like that? <laughs> I spent all of 15 minutes setting that up so that it doesn't have the uh, window behind me, I've got new lighting too, it's freaking high tech up in here man. I am just circularizing this orbit, which means I have to concentrate a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. Point it at that, fast forward it. This is gonna be almost no burn, only 12 meters per second. So I'm gonna burn when it's T minus three or something like that. So let's fire it up. That should be a nice circular orbit. Let's check it out. On one side, one zero 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 four seven. I'll take it. 99.932 Let me sell you a used car So this is a nice circular predictable orbit if you're having trouble getting the rendezvous down It makes a lot of sense if your target is in a circular orbit try to get it try to get your target a nice predictable safe steady stable orbit um, before you try to go into more advanced stuff like intercepting things that are in wacky elliptical orbits or doing flybys like asteroids or whatever. Um, if you're new to this, get that target into a nice elliptical orbit first. If you're new to this, get that orbit into a nice circular orbit. I guess it is an ellipse, it's just an ellipse that's uh, equal on both sides. Um, but uh, get it into a circular orbit, that'll make it easier to rendezvous with. Let's switch back to the docker. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, okay, y'all got that. Good deal. Thanks for answering the questions over there in chat. Um, guys, I do appreciate the help. I can't run my mouth, keep caught up with chat, and fly rockets all at once, so I do appreciate the help over in there in chat. So let's plan this dude's node. Um, here we go. That node is coming up. That node is way behind us. Let's delete it and do a new one. And I'm just going to put a node here, here on the orbit, in front of the craft. The craft is coming around this way. I'm going to put the node up here. All I need to do is change this. Actually, if you need a place to put it, go ahead and put it at the apoapse or the periapse. Um, I'm going to toss it at the periapse because it's coming up next. And I'm going to burn prograde at the periapse until my new apoapse is 100. That's 113. That's too much. So let's take it on down until it's at 100. You can see what I'm doing there. Let me get it down off the bottom. There we go. That's a nice... I'm just removing prograde delta V until I get right there to 100. Why am I setting my Docker's apoapse at 100? Because that's the apoapse of our... Or that's the orbit of our target. Um, basically what I'm doing, I've got my Docker in a lower orbit so it can catch up. 
and I'm going to kick it out to the higher orbit at some point in the future. The trick is we need to figure out when in the future that needs to be. So let's click on the space hag, let's set it as the target. Now you can see the encounter markers. <laughs> this is freaking terrible. <laughs> if we burn this node and we increase our apoeps, or we increase our yeah, apoeps up to 100, we're going to be up here and the space hag is going to be on the opposite side of the planet. That's totally lame. We're not going to be able to rendezvous with it like that. But wait. In the arm update, we got this new functionality. If you click on your node here and you expand it like this, let me zoom in so we can see what's going on. If you click on your node and expand it, and then right click on it, you'll get this interface. So all I did, I clicked on the node, I expanded it out like that, then I right clicked in the middle of it, I got this interface. This is very useful. What right now this is telling us, this is where are we gonna be if we burn the next time we come to this node? I can click on this, which adds an orbit to it. So this is, wait, wait, wait. What if we pass the node, do a complete orbit, and then burn next time we come to the node? Every time I click that button, it adds one more orbit to it. So you can see as I click, the rendezvous changes, and as I unclick, the rendezvous changes. So I'm either adding orbits. You can also see it in the time there. See that node is in T minus one hour, 13 minutes. If I click once, it's one hour and 43 minutes. If I click again, it's two hours and 14 minutes. This is really important. It tells you how many times should I go around the planet before I burn this node. And we can use that to get closer and closer because look what's happening. Focus on Kerbin, please. <laughs> or not. Whatever. Right click on that node. Let's add an orbit. Hey, look. Now we're going to be here and the space hag is going to be there. That's cool. Let's add another orbit. We're going to be here. The space hag is going to be there. Every time I add an orbit, I give more time for us to run on the inside of the track and catch up to the space hag. Let's click again. We're getting closer. Let's click again. We're getting closer. One more time. Look how close that is. And we've passed it. Okay, that's cool. Let's set it off one. And now fine tune it. To fine tune it, we don't have to change the delta V. All we have to do is change when we want to burn the node. So I can click on it here. And as I drag it, and I just totally screwed it up. That's a bug that's so annoying. I'm going to drag it up a little bit here. I'm going to click my orbits back around. All right, that's not quite right. Let's drag it some more. See as I change it, see how we get those different encounters. That's apparently missing. Let's go this way. Oh, oh, that looks good. See how those two red things are coming together? So I'm burning the node earlier and earlier. They're coming together. That was pretty close right there see how I got those two red things together I didn't change the Delta V at all I set the Delta V once to do a home and transfer to kick my orbit from 74 up to 100 that's where the space hags waiting for us right I kicked that transfer up I didn't change the Delta V all I changed was when I'm going to do the burn that's all we had to do this is a separation of what 17.5 now that I've got that so close, let's see if we can tweak the burn just a little bit to get ourselves closer. So I'm going to get it a, give it a little bit more delta V. Is that helping us or hurting us? Rendezvous now 12. Look at that. Okay. Now that's 3.7. I'm going to take a little bit back out. Oops. That's not so solid. This happens every now and then. You see how it's blinking? Um, it means that it's having trouble deciding exactly what's going to happen at that point in time. You can just change the delta V a little bit to try and get more of a solid encounter. That's actually pretty darn close there. So what did we get? It's hard to see with the clouds, I know. How can I get to the dark side? There we go. So you can see very on the other end of the screen there, we've got 3.3 kilometers. So basically what's gonna happen in four hours, 35 minutes, we're gonna burn this node. We're gonna go around the planet lots of times. It's about a 30 minute period, it looks like. So we're gonna go around the planet eight, nine times before we get to this node. Then we're gonna burn this transfer, this uh, maneuver node. We're gonna use how much Delta V? Let's hover over it to see. We're gonna use 25 meters per second of Delta V. 
that's almost no delta V. We did that because we were changing the time we were going to burn, not the amount of delta V we're using to do the burn. This is a very, a very simple, a very efficient way to do the uh, maneuver here. So we're going to burn 25 meters per second of delta V, and that's going to be freaking awesome. That'll put us on a course that should give us an intersect of 3.3 kilometers, a rendezvous of 3.3 kilometers. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm already pointing in the right direction, don't tell anyone, it's almost like we've done this before. And I am going to set up the time warp and check the chat. Actually, let's do this. Another mod that I freaking love is Kerbal Alarm Clock. I'm going to click on Kerbal Alarm Clock up here. That's going to make sure that while I'm checking the chat, I don't miss the maneuver nodes. Maybe for you, it's when you go get a snack, you don't miss the maneuver nodes. It'll actually slow down the time warp. Um, in the game right before you get to the node so that you don't miss it. So Kerbal Alarm Clock is a lot more powerful than just that, but because I've got the node on there, I can click Kerbal Alarm Clock and I can say, uh, this is my transfer burn. So I'm just gonna do trans. It's gonna warn me one minute out. I'm gonna add the alarm. I'm gonna bump up the time warp. I can't go any faster than 50X. That's okay. I'm gonna check the chat right quick. Let's see what we got. <laughs> I'm glad this is definitely a Kerbal Space Academy stream. Um, the purpose of Kerbal Space Academy is to actually explain what we're doing to make it so more players can accomplish what it is they want to do in the game. Um, we also do fun streams where we crash into the moon and we try to do wacky challenges like land only using SRBs or re-enter hanging onto a ladder. Uh, but the Kerbal Space Academy streams, when they're named that way, it's definitely me explaining what's going on. Um, and hopefully not excruciating detail. If you have any questions, if I glaze over something too fast, um, if it's related to the topic that I'm talking about, I'll answer it and I'll see if I can't demonstrate it in the game. Um, if it's related to something else, I may tell you that we're going to do a stream on that tomorrow, space planes or whatever. Um, but feel free to ask questions. That's why I'm doing this, because I want more people to get what Kerbal Space Program is and how they can accomplish their own missions in Kerbal Space Program. So, feel free to ask questions. I don't bite. Ask anybody else in the channel. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, Luis. We can, we can do the elliptical orbits, but we're trying to keep it really simple for people that are just doing this. Um, we'll get the direct rendezvous next, which is one of the more difficult things to do. But yes, you can intercept the elliptical or orbits using the same sort of techniques. Having two circular orbits makes it the easiest for people that are just getting into us. I feel like one of the one of the things with KSP is that we're always trying to show off how cool we are. And it's like, oh, yeah, I can intersect that orbit before it crashes into the moon or whatever. It's not, a, you know, whatever. There's so much kind of peen wanging in it. We're trying to show off how cool we are. And I feel like a lot of the times we skip the simple stuff. And that makes it intimidating to new people. So for that purpose, yeah, we could totally do this rendezvous a couple different ways. We're going to do the direct orbital rendezvous next, which is totally awesome. But uh, I'm really trying to keep it to simple maneuvers so that people who haven't done this, maybe they're having trouble just getting into space, uh, feel like it's a little bit more accessible to them. But you are exactly correct. We can do this in a lot of different ways, and it just basically costs us delta V. Um, we can do some really inefficient things. We can do direct transfers if we want to, and all it costs us is more or less delta V. Da, 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 da. have to be careful. Another cool thing. I'm not sure what I just said that was cool, but I'm glad that it was cool. I'm not glad that you didn't know it, but I'm glad that you learned it because I said it. So anyways, good deal. Uh, we have another two hours and 22 minutes here. You can see that I am constrained. I can't time warp any faster because this craft is orbiting below 1,200 meters. Um, I could go into a higher orbit and do it backwards. I could be out at a buck fifty or two hundred and the hag would be going faster than me because at 100 it would be on the inside track 200 we'd be on the outside track so what we just did would be op opposite um, or I could go over to the tracking center and that would let me fast forward more quickly um, since I'm talking and I'm gonna check chat and that sort of stuff um, I am just going to let this go at the capped uh, time warp so also another little ringly ding Put a station at a 45 degree inclination. <laughs> ah, yes. We can do that, Luis. Hey, Gav, 1100, thanks for the follow, by the way. Uh, we could totally do that. I mean, we could put something in an inclined orbit, and we can see the problems we have in the real world launching from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, um, as opposed to on the equator, which is, cur which is where KSC is, luckily. Launching on the equator makes life a whole lot 
easier for everybody involved. Um, but in real life, like the ISS Lewis was talking about, um, the ISS is in an inclined orbit, which means that it goes around the planet on a tilt, not flat with the equator, but on a tilt. And uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult to rendezvous with. That's for sure. Oh, nice. Yeah, Harry Bucket, that was totally added uh, when we got the Asteroid Redirect Pack. Um, that little orbital increase and decrease sort of thing, that thing is so useful. It makes these rendezvous so easy with just a minimum amount of Delta V. I mean, 25 freaking Delta V. That's almost nothing. Uh, but again, we are using a home and transfer here to do the orbit, to do the rendezvous. And the home and transfer is a very efficient way to go from point A to point B. Orbit A to orbit B in space, because points don't really make a lot of sense. We're going through a whole heck of a lot of points right now, given that we're orbiting in 3D. So we're down to 36 minutes. Um, follow party ring a ding. I, I need some cool, uh, some cool emotes or something like that. Apparently, I have to do Twitch a lot more before I get that sort of stuff. This orbit, brought to you by Delicious Dr Pepper. <laughs> Uh, Gene, I know you can force physics that way. I'm not sure. Let's, let's test it right quick. Actually, since it's coming up in 15 minutes, maybe I shouldn't test it. Let's try to slow it down. No, I can't. I can't force it. Um, I can force physics time warp like this, holding down alt, but I can't force more than 50,000 meter time warp. Or sorry, more than 50x time warp because we're under 12,000 meters. I do know that's configurable in the game file if you want to get into that, but uh, it looks like it's not letting me do that here. So let's talk about a couple different things. Here's Kerbal Alarm Clock going off. Uh, I'm going to tell it to delete that alarm and close it because, check it out, coming up behind us, coming up in front of us, coming up somewhere, there it is, that's our target. Right now we're only 65.3 kilometers away from it. Let us execute our burn and watch ourselves coast on out. So I'm going to point at my green thingy, my blue thingy here, which is my maneuver node. Uh, 25 meters per second on a craft that has 2.179 thrust to weight. I'm not going to worry about calculating it. That thrust to weight is high enough and the delta V is low enough that uh, we don't really need to split the, the maneuver here. We're just going to do it live and burn this node call it like T minus two seconds I think so I'm just counting it down there's seven six five four three two let's do the burn good thing my engine was enabled Wow that was faster than I anticipated but there's the burn let's go check our rendezvous there we have Wow we actually came in a little bit more it's not so solid but it'll do Basically, when we get around there, we're going to be really freaking close to it. I can't quite say. It looks like it's saying 2.9 when it flicks back and forth. That is good enough. What is this one over here? 16.8. That's fine. Hey, look, there we go. 2.9. Apparently just uh, moving. Apparently it's solid now. So let's time warp. I'm going to bring up the nav ball. Here's the next important thing before I get into time warping. Um, we're going to need to identify where the target is. So for now, before we do the time warp, make sure this on the nav ball says target. We don't want it to say orbit. We don't want it to say surface. We want to say target, and we want it to show us the relative velocity to the target. I'll explain what that means when we get up here. Let's go ahead and come on around the Kerbin. We're just time warping around, and you can see that entire time look. We're closing with that craft. We're coming up out of the orbit. We're basically digging our way up. We're going to pass it here. And we keep on warping around till this. I think when it's about two minutes out, I'm going to slow that down. So there's four, three, two. Let's slow it down. Now let's go back to the other screen and see if we can see that target. There's the target. We're 5.5 kilometers from it. We're really close. So let's... Go ahead and find the green thingy on the nav ball. This is the green X on the nav ball. Make sure it's in target mode. Find the green X. That's the motion relative to the space hag. Actually, let me explain it. Um, that green X on the nav ball, hey, Zmok B. 
Thanks for the follow. Welcome to Kerbal Space Academy. Um, the green X on the nav ball is our relative motion in the backwards direction. <laughs> relative to our target. So the Duna Space Hag is our target. This green X tells me if I burn while I'm pointing at this green X, I'll decrease the relative velocity. Let me show you what I mean. I'm pointing at the green X with the front of my craft. I'm going to light the engines up and see how that target relative velocity drops. If I go around to the other side and I catch the green, the prograde relative motion marker, if I burn this way, that means that we're going to increase the relative velocity. So that's what those green balls on the nav, make sure it's in target mode and go find the one that is the green X. Here's the next important thing. We need to try and push this green X towards the pink X. Here's how we do it. If we burn straight on the node, or straight on the uh, marker like this, that doesn't move it, that just slows us down. If I burn off the side of it, that actually moves that green indicator. Can you see it move? Not only does it slow us down, it also moves us. And I call this pushing green. See how I'm pushing that little green marker over towards the pink marker and stop. All I did was burn off the side of the green thing. Look, I can, I can line it up by pointing down here and burning a little bit. And now we're doing that. So what does that mean? That means, let's flip around to the prograde side. Look at this. The green thing is straight on the pink thing. <laughs> Those are technical terms. Because the green thing is on the, pink, on the pink thing and we're only 3.2 kilometers away, that means that we're moving straight at that target. If the green thing was off the pink thing, that would mean that we're going past it. We're going past it in some direction like this. I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing with my hands. But because the green thing is directly on the pink thing, we're going straight at it right now. That usually means that if we go back to the map, we're going to have a really good encounter. Check this out. Separation 0.2 kilometers when we get around to that encounter. That's only because I got close. About 20 to 15 kilometers is really striking distance. If you can get within that range and put the green thing on the pink thing, like we just did by burning and pushing that node around, or moving that marker around, you're basically just bending your orbit. Before we were like this, we were kind of burning off at an angle, and we just bent that orbit down so that we're going to hit the pink thing. We're going to hit our target. So, the next thing we need to do is just turn around and find the way we're going to need to burn to slow down. Watch this. This is what confuses a lot of people. As we time warp here, you're going to see the green thing move away from the pink thing. Totally technical terms. Again, <laughs> could I use the actual terms for what those things are? Yes. It doesn't matter. We don't need to show off that we know what these things are called. We just want to get to space and rendezvous with our space hag. So see, it moved off the side. That means we get more resolution. The closer we get to that target, the more resolution we get onto exactly where we're going to pass it. This means we're not going to hit it. We're going to pass it at some velocity or some uh, distance off the side of it. I can push it. Check it out. I'm pushing the green X again right on it. I bet you if we go back to the map view, we have a really good encounter. I'm going to say this is 0.0. .0. 0, 0.0 separation on the encounter there. That means that we, if we're not going to hit it, we're going to come within scraping distance of it. So all we need to do now that we've got the green retrograde marker, the green X pointed at the pink X, is stay on target until we get close. My rule of thumb, we're approaching the target here at 7.5 meters per second. So that means for every one second in the game, this number right here, the distance to the target, goes down by 7.5 meters. Um, we're fine. You don't want to be coming in here at 50 meters per second when you're only 500 meters away. My general rule of thumb is I try to be the distance divided by 100. So right now I should really be closing at 5 meters per second. I can burn a little bit to slow that down. And my next checkpoint's like 200 meters. When I get within 200 meters, I try to reduce it down to 2 meters per second. So we just continually watch that number. We don't want to run into it. If you're impatient, don't burn. Just hit the forward. What is that? Just hit the period and time warp. And we will coast on into the target here. So now you can see we're 200 meters away. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the velocity down to 2 meters per second. There's 2 meters per second. We're still coasting right at the space hag. 
here is a very interesting thing, and I'm going to pause. Um, what we've got, we're approaching the space hag, right? But we know that we want to dock with that docking port that's on the back of it, that big Clampatron Senior, right? So in an advanced rendezvous, we can actually control which side of the target we're going to come up on by looking at the nav ball. Here's how we do that. We need to find the dorsal side of our craft, which on this one was eh, da, 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 up. We know that it's where we put uh, the spotlight here, and we know that it's kind of the top of this thing. I'm going to go ahead and f orient the craft so that we're pointing at the target like this, and we understand which is the dorsal side. Like that. The dorsal, if you watch Shark Week, you know what dorsal is. The fin on the back of the shark, the dorsal fin. Um, that just means the top the top of our craft is the way that I call it. But now I can see that because the green thing, because we're dorsal up and because the green thing is off to the side of the pink thing, that means that we're going to pass to the left of the station. Sorry, to the right of the station, the ship here. Let me go ahead and kill this velocity so we have time to talk. Oops, now we're going away from the station. Notice how I've got the pink thing here, but the green circle, not the green X. That means that now I'm going away from the station. Um, because the green thing is near the pink X. Let's go ahead and turn on our RCS and back ourselves on back down. There we go. Now we're going towards the station again. So check out what's going on here, right? We've got the dorsal side of our craft up. We have the green relative motion in the backwards direction. The green X means we're backing towards this direction, right? And the pink X means that our tail end is pointed there. Notice if I point my marker at the pink X, that basically tells us that this ship is pointing directly at the target, just like that. And if I point at that, that's the direction we're moving in, but that's not us pointing directly at the target. So if I flipped it around, it's the same thing. I can flip all the way around and point at the pink prograde. Prograde, not really. The pink direct, that means I'm pointing directly at that target. If I point off in my direction of motion, that's the way that I'm going. And you can see that doesn't really look like we're going to miss it. That looks like we're going to bounce off the engine nacelle there. So let us fix things. Again, let's find the dorsal side of the craft, which is here. Here, where are you at? There we go. This is the dorsal side of the craft. So now I'm going to switch to chase cam because we're in a weird position here. There we go. This is the dorsal side of the craft. That's the direction of motion. I'm going to go ahead and puff off to the side. So see how that the green thing moved, right? Looking at the nav ball, the green thing is way off to the side. The pink thing is way over here. That means that we're going to miss the ship off to the right. That's what we want to do. Watch as I coast. I'm going to coast. We're going to miss it off to the right. Just like that. We almost made a field goal there going between the engine nacelle goalposts. In fact, I almost bounced off of them. And let's go ahead and press in to kill our relative motion here. So I've I've really come way, a lot closer to this than I wanted to. Uh, let me get away from it a little bit so that I can show you how we're going to do the docking. For the docking... I use a freaking awesome mod. I'm just getting away. I use an awesome mod called Navball Docking Alignment Indicator. What that is, it's linked down in the channel description. I can turn around here. I know I'm pretty close, right? And I'm going to back off just so I can show you what I'm doing. Let me back off and then kill the motion. All right, good deal. So there's that. Let's kill the relative motion. I'm just pointing at the green X. Anytime I go towards the green X, I'm killing the relative motion. There we go. All right, close enough. So I've got a mod called Navball Docking Alignment Indicator. What that means is I can right-click on this docking port. Thanks, Kerbal Space Program, for allowing me to right-click. There we go. I can right-click on the docking port. I can click Set Target. And that gives me a new indicator here. That gives me a red ball. What I want to do is rotate around so that I am pointing directly at that red ball. That means, let me get it exact. Let me get it close enough. That means that we are perfectly lined up with the docking port. We are not pointing directly at it. 
but we're not tilted like this. We are completely even on both of those axes, and what we need to do is line it up now. So the red ball means we're pointing at the docking port, even if we're not tilted up or down. Um, wow, that's a lot of buttons. Dream Scout, I missed some people. Who else just uh, who else just followed? I appreciate everybody who just followed. Let me continue with the uh, <laughs> Chiphead and Dream Scout, and probably one more I might have missed. Thanks everybody for following Kerbal Space Academy. Anyways, where were we? We were getting set as the target. There we go. Set as target. We're aligned. What we need to do now is put the red ball on the nav, even with the pink ball on the nav. To do that, we use our RCS. We puff off in different directions. So let me get going towards the target. Remember what I said about that green thing? There's going towards the target. You can see down on the nav ball, we're now going towards the target. As long as I had the X there, that means we're going away from the target because the X is near the, the pink circle as opposed to the pink X. Let me go towards the target. Now we've got the green thing next to the purple thing, pink thing, whatever thing. That means we're going towards the target. Remember what I said about the dorsal side. Because we've got dorsal up, this is illustrating our motion in the real world. So we're going to pass the station up and to the right. That's important because we want to get aligned with the docking port. And in order to do that, I want to draw a straight line. I want to have a line from the red thing through the pink thing to the green thing. That means that our relative motion is basically going to pass the pink thing and then we can kill it and go straight towards it. But again, I just made a straight line between... I just got another follow. Dear Hiel. Thanks for the follow, dear Hiel. I continue to just leave this as a straight line and watch that nav ball and watch the real world. The red thing is getting near the pink thing. That's exactly what we want. We want to line it up like this. Again, I'm just using the green prograde motion. Pro I don't even know if that's the right, right term for it. Using the green relative motion towards the thing to drag the red circle over the pink circle. We're going to do this a couple more times. So if you're not catching it now, we're going to do this a couple times. Now check it out. We got the red circle over the green circle, over the pink circle, that means that we're lined up, we're oriented correctly, and we're moving towards it. We're moving towards it at 0.2 meters per second. That is exactly what we want. Check the side of the craft there. We're going straight at that docking port. We can tweak it a little bit. It looks like we're going to list off to the left of it a little bit, so let's puff over to the right. I mean, look how freaking easy this is. We don't have to do anything other than put the green thing on the red thing on the pink thing and we get docked it's really not that complicated um, let me now that we've got docked let me get caught up with chat and see if there are any questions I know that we talked through a lot of stuff there we're gonna do a couple more dockings we're gonna do a couple rendezvous so we're gonna repeat this a couple times um, if you missed it now you will probably if I don't answer it you'll catch it on the next time so let me check the chat Da -da 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 -da. Insert rod A. KS. Jeez. Okay, there's the station. That's the last place we were. KSA Dr. Pepper. Yes. <laughs> Talking about the soda. Excellent. Click the speed reader to change modes. I'm not sure what that even means. Zim. Yeah, the pink thingy. The important thing is not that you use the technical term and try to look smart. The, term, the important thing is that you know that what it means in the game and how you can use it. It's like pushing a soap bubble in a bowl of water. Like pushing a grease bubble in a soap bowl of water using a piece of soap? Kind of? Not sure. Insert rod A into slot B. This isn't Ikea. It's rocket science. Bend a girder. Didn't do any of that. There is no spoon. That's how we bend things. <laughs> All right. Apparently, these aren't questions. <laughs> this red icon is the nav... Didn't I say that? I totally think I said that. The link to the navball docking icon is down in the description. You won't get that in stock KSP. You totally get that if you install the navball docking indicator, which is down linked in my uh, mods. Which keys am I using? Corn chips. I tried to get a one of them things, like you see the StarCraft people like 
clicking a million keys and down at the bottom of, this, of their stream it shows what keys they're pressing in seemingly random fashions. Um, I tried to get that working. I got one. I modified it specific for KSP, but I couldn't get it working with uh, OBS. So I'm going to keep working on that. Um, but when I do these, I definitely want to have kind of down here um, what keys I'm pressing. I was using the stock keys, which are IJK for translation and uh, H and N. I think that's less confusing than going into the special docking mode. So I'm not even going to say that. I dock with two hands. Um, one set on ASDW, the other hand on IJKL. That's how I do the docking. But if you do it one step at a time, if you set up your axes first, you align um, with your pitch and yaw, and then you go about your translation, you don't have to worry about being too confused. That's what Navball Docking Indicator does for you. Line up with the red dot first, the red ball. That means that your pitch and yaw are correct. Then translate so that you're pointing at the target. Um, I think that's the easiest way to go about it. So let's see here. KSA cast, excellent right strike controller. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My, wow, you use an Xbox 360 controller to fly? I definitely don't do that. Destin, Destin and, and again? Destinehan, Destinehan? Welcome, haven't seen your name before. Ah, da, 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 da. I think we got all that and we got docked. Apparently I'm covering up one of the Kerbals. I wonder if I can make it look like I'm in the little box not really <laughs> whatever we'll do that in the future um, so we've docked that's bueno that's what we wanted to try and accomplish and we've delivered the new docking adapter here to the tail end of the space hag science vessel I'll take it uh, the next thing we need to do is a crew transfer so let's have a little bit of fun let's get old Jeb out actually Jeb's gonna be in the main seat so let's get Bill out of the hitchhiker first Bill, RCS, spacebar to let go, turn on your RCS, turn on your lights just because, and wow, that makes no sense at all, you're totally flying away from the ship. <laughs> let us, where's our doctor, there it is. Let's get old Bill flying around here. Do -do 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 -do. By the way, don't move this fast, I'm just doing it quickly. I don't recommend flying them this quickly. Grab it, and get on board. Now we need to get who's next, who's in the hitchhiker. Bob, is it? Yes, Bob is still in the hitchhiker. So Bob, you're next. Let's transfer over. Spacebar to let go. R to turn on RCS. Flying around over to the capsule. Ouch. Almost banged my head on that. Not as bad as what we did to him last night when we crashed into the moon using only solid boosters. <laughs> you get on board. Who was our pilot? Barmore. All right, Barmore. You're going to go on an EVA, buddy. Get out of the main pod. Let go. RCS on. Let's fly over and put you in the hitchhiker. Where is the door to the hitchhiker? On the dorsal side of the craft, which is down. Excellent. There's the hitchhiker. I think I can use a different camera and then it'll let me reorient him. <laughs> there we go, that's what we were looking for. I switched to chase camera and I hit the space bar to get him to reorient like that. So we'll puff him on over. He can chill out in the hitchhiker. He's basically just staying on station. And last but not least, our good buddy Jeb. Let's go put him in the return craft. So Jeb, space bar to let go, RCS engage. Flippity fly. Go back to the chase camera. Orient to the camera. Fly, Jeb. And I guess Jeb is awesome. He likes to uh, he likes to do a check out of the ship he's about to pilot. So he's gonna fly around it like this a couple times <laughs> before he gets on board. It's his prerogative. He <laughs> maybe it would help if he ends up on the right side of the craft. Come on, Jeb. It's his prerogative since he uh, had an interesting time last night. <laughs> Deorbiting, hanging on a ladder. That'd be hilarious if I ran Jeb out of jetpack fuel. <laughs> and then I had to rendezvous with Jeb and rescue him. <laughs> there we go. All right, we're back, we're back. Less screwing around. 
It's like the movie Gravity, except Kerbal Space Program's physics are more accurate. <laughs> All right, so now Jeb's on board, too. I wonder what seed he got. Did he get stick? He got... Oh, poor Jeb. He gets the worst seed of the flight. I wish you could choose what seed he was sitting in, but he has the sit down here. Too bad. Oh, here's the dude in the, uh, <laughs> in the hitchhiker. Good deal. All right, let's go back outside. So, we've delivered the cor cargo. We've done the crew transfer. Let's do the deorbit and rescue our dudes. And where are we at? Okay, excellent. <laughs> Should let him ride on the ladder again? I don't know. We don't have the Stay Putnik there. We don't have the very special uh, Jeb restraint device. I, I, he may not li leave... Uh, he may not... Uh, I don't know. He may not live through it. Make a joystick special translation stick for less than $100. Nice. <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out, Gene Kerman. I don't know if I caught you before you took off, but uh, I just caught up with the chat. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, da -da -da -da. I haven't checked my pre PMs yet. Learned a lot. All right, good deal. Um, I will check my PMs after the cast, though, when I go through the break before we do free play or whatever. So... Let us decouple in deorbit. To do that, we're going to go ahead. Do we have enough fuel on here? Yes, we do. That's enough. How much fuel do we have here? Oh my gosh, that right click bug. Oh. Okay. Now we're good. Now I can right click. We'll just go ahead and use the fuel. I'm, eh, I'm not too worried about it. I was going to transfer some of the fuel out, but with this right-click thing is getting on my nerves. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, F5. I'm going to decouple this node. I'm going to switch over. To, there's old Barmore. He's going to stay on station by himself, sweeping out the snack crumbs. Oh, my gosh. All right. RCS. Puff off the station. We've got Buku Delta V. <laughs> 923 Delta V. I totally needed more fuel, didn't I, Luis? I needed a lot more fuel. Gosh. <laughs> uh, we're good to go though let's lock down the panel and since we're controlling this ship let's plan our deorbit we've done enough deorbits that we know about the formula for it uh, this is my formula I'm going to set a node right here past this is the mountain range this is Kerbal Asia I guess, I don't know, I totally made that up um, this is the mountain range in the middle of Kerbal Asia I set a node a little bit past it and then I take away velocity, I burn retrograde until it just about touches that little island <laughs> um, we need to go ahead and put probes out there, I usually have a probe that says deorbit burn here, periaps here, or impact here um, we've just done enough burns that we know that that gets us pretty close to where we need to get in terms of deorbiting so now all that's left to do is fast forward on around Let's find where our burn's gonna be and point at it. And then fast forward on around to do this deorbit. And what we want, we want that node to be over that mountain range when we do the burn. That's why I set it a little bit ahead because Kerbin is turning and the node is not, the node is staying in one place. So I may need to tweak the node. Uh, I may need to tweak the velocity. But when I get up to it like that, that's pretty darn close. And he's a little bit... Now, that's fine. We'll just do it just off the coast. We can do a little bit of paragliding here. And I will do this burn in... I'm just going to guess and say that we need to do it at about... Uh, what's our thrust to weight? 2.5. We need to do it at about 5 seconds out. I'm going to guess. Um, this is... I would call it a bug. Uh, it can't figure out, for some reason, the amount of time it's going to take this burn. I don't understand why. It knows the craft's mass. It knows the thrust of the engine. It knows how quickly it's going to burn the fuel. It can use the rocket equation to figure out how quickly it's going to burn the fuel. There's no reason that the game shouldn't be able to calculate how long it's going to take us to do 132 meters a second delta V. So I'm not sure. It only does it once you turn on the engine. Um, and we don't want to turn the engine on right now because it's not time to burn yet. Um, maybe they'll fix that in the future. I'm not sure if there's some technical reason that uh, keeps them from being able to calculate that. So, 
I'm going to go ahead and burn it. I think minus 10. There's 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Light it up. Full throttle. That's going to be a bit too much. We'll back off the throttle a little bit. There's our burn. Yeah, whatever. We should have burned at minus 5, but it's good enough for government work. Let's see where we're impacting. That's good. I have a feeling we're going to come down. You may ask, aren't I going to hit right here in the middle of the ocean? Is that what you want? We're not going to do that. This orbit doesn't take into account the planet's atmosphere. And once we start getting down to the soup, we bite into that atmosphere, it's going to slow us down. And this orbit's going to degrade. We should come down somewhere in the vicinity of KSP. Of course, since I'm streaming this live, we're probably going to come down on top of a mountain. Um, or in the middle of the water. But this is a guest test and revise sort of deal. So, let's go ahead and watch our craft. Orient it retrograde. Check all our stuff. I think we're good. Engineer, I love you, but I don't need you right now. And let's fast forward until it won't let us fast forward no more. So, we're falling towards the planet. Now we've entered the atmosphere. You'll see this little gauge start to move here. Let's go ahead and point retrograde as if we've got a heat shield back there. Uh, for the Kerbal Space Academy things, we're keeping it simple. We don't play with the Dre, the deadly reentry uh, mod, which would totally burn you the heck up if you tried to do this without a heat shield. Stock KSP gives you a pretty light show whenever you get into orbit, but it doesn't actually heat you up and make you die. So uh, there is a mod you can install called Deadly Reentry. DRE is what you'll see on the forums a lot of the times. If you would like to die when you're reentering, um, you can totally download that mod. But for the purposes of per Kerbal Space, bleh, for the purposes of Kerbal Space Academy, we like to keep it simple. So let's go ahead and physics warp and watch my orbit degrade. So remember, I said once we get down to the atmosphere, that air is going to grab a hold of us and start degrading us. You can see that orbit moving just barely. There's not really a good landmark out there. But that orbit's getting shallower and shallower. And the deeper... There you go. Look at it move. The deeper we get into that atmosphere, the more that orbit's going to degrade. Let us see where we are right now. We're going to go way over KSC. Luckily, we've got engines. We're going to burn straight down to get into the atmosphere as fast as possible. Don't try this in real life. This does not work in real life. <laughs> Good news is we're in Kerbal Space Program. Not real life. I'm just trying to bite into the atmosphere. I went way long. That's okay. Burn off all my velocity. We're going to pop the chutes and we're going to maybe paraglide. I don't know. Right now I'm going to end up in the drink. I'm going to go into the ocean. <laughs> Look at that fireball as we re-enter. I think we'll be fine though. We did miss KSC. Let's burn all of our Delta V, trying to stay as close to KSC as we can. What do we got? Yeah, we're using that fuel quick, quickly. I'm just trying to get... There we go. We're done So Now we land where we land. So we're going to pop shoots. Thup, thup, thup. Excellent. And we're going to go ahead and end up in the drink over here just past KSC. So landing gear, <laughs> thanks for coming along for the ride. You're worthless to us. <laughs> It wouldn't have made a huge difference either way. Retrograde, um, I find that when you're really close to 20, it feels like you can get more by biting into the atmosphere harder as opposed to uh, trying to burn straight retrograde. So I was trying to get into the atmosphere quicker so that it would kill us off sooner. Kill us off sooner. Um, so that it would kill off the velocity sooner. That's what I was doing there. Um, you have a seaplane. <laughs> nice. Let's see here. When users are disabled and re-enabled, it doesn't calculate it. Yeah, exactly. But see, that doesn't make any sense. Just assume that we're going to be thrusting in the correct direction. Um, because it knows which way they're pointing, right? I, I don't... Wow, 13 meters per second. That's bad news. We're going to lose some parts here on this lander. <laughs> Hooray! We've landed. Say the landing gear. Uh, we needed more chutes. But that's okay. Uh, we lost an engine. We lost the fuel tank. The rest of the craft was fine. It looks like those might have broken off. <laughs> Our landing gear, they were fine. Everybody's fine. We don't have to worry about it. 
All good deal. So let's go ahead and rescue these guys. So. Excellent. That's what we needed to do. How are we doing on time? 940. Hmm. I talked a lot more than I thought. So here's all our crew. We're good to go. Uh, we also want to do a direct orbital rendezvous. So here's what we're going to do with a direct orbital rendezvous. I am going to go into the VAB. I'm going to swipe out the... Wait, I don't have to go to the VAB. Yeah, I don't need to be in the VAB. I just launched a ship. Uh, there was a question I missed over there. What do I do as a job? Uh, I do a lot of different things. I'm professionally trained as a computer software architect. So that's what I've done for a living for a very long time. I actually uh, am an independent consultant, so I do my own sort of deal. Um, but computer software architect for CRM solutions <laughs> using Microsoft technologies, if that uh, answers it for you. Nothing to do with space. Nothing to do with the Kerbal Space Program. Uh, I make it so that people know whenever you call into their call center, which is totally boring, as it turns out. Let's launch this other rocket because I've got 20 minutes up to finish this up here. So let's get our KSA Docker Mark 1. Let's change our crew. Jeb, you're going to play bus driver. We're going to send old Desktop and Lengoon up there with you. Uh, we're going to finish staffing the science ship. We'll send Desktop up with some Lengoon up. Jeb will come on back with Pod and uh, let us go for a direct rendezvous this time. So here's how we do that. I'm going to put the craft on the pad. I totally feel like I'm going to sneeze. Bless me, I guess. I apologize for that. I think I unjacked before I sneezed. Gosh, I'm allergic to uh, flying Jeb places, I guess. That's pretty sad. Uh, da -da -da, extra parts on landing. <laughs> nice. Pick them up. Yes, use the legs to surf back. <laughs> Serum architect. Uh, yes, I've programmed in C Sharp. Um, it's been a while. I don't really... I basically run teams of people who are software engineers and uh, C-sharp programmers. It's been a very long time since I've programmed in C-sharp myself, but I did that long ago and far away. So, direct orbital rendezvous. I'll get caught up with the chat after we do this rendezvous. To do this, we need to launch at a specific time, right? The entire thing we did with the home and transfer, going into orbit, waiting nine orbits, going around, 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 around while, while our orbit synced up, that didn't take very much delta V, but it did take us a lot of time. We had to do nine orbits before we actually got there. Um, say you're on a rescue mission, <laughs> you've got some sort of life support mod installed or something, you've got to get there right freaking now, you don't have time to sit in home and transfer orbits, or in, in lower orbits to catch up, and spin around and around Kerbin, nine or ten orbits, whatever. You've got to get there right now. Um, there is a way to do that, or actually you've got to get there on the next available orbit, let's say. There is a way to do that, and it all comes down to when you launch. You have to launch when your target is at a very specific place in the sky. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set the Duna Space Hag as our target here, and we are going to wait for it to come to that special place in the sky where we can do a direct orbital rendezvous with a properly designed craft. That special place in the sky is right over Kerbal India. This continent right here, kind of hard to see with the cloud cover, uh, but this continent right here is what I call Kerbal India. It's shaped roughly like India, meaning that it sticks down into some large body of water. Beyond that, I mean, it's clearly not Kerbal Florida. Um, this seriously looks like Africa. I call this Kerbal India just so I know what I'm talking about. Um, also, Kerbal Asia. It's kind of attached to Kerbal Asia. But what we want to do is launch when that craft is over Kerbal India. Our target is over Kerbal India. So I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward time. We're going to wait for the space hag to go round and round and round one orbit until it gets right over Kerbal India. It helps to put Kerbal India in the middle there. And see there, the space hag's coming around, coming around, coming around. Slow down that time warp. We're going to do things quick here, so get ready, because as soon as Kerbal India gets... Remember, the space hag's clocking along at 2246 meters per second. It's got to go that fast so it keeps missing Kerbin, right? So every second that we delay, it's gone 2.2 kilometers. We've got to time this pretty close to right. Um, my craft has really good delta V, really good thrust to weight. So I'm going to launch when it gets just over the east coast of Kerbal India here. 
So just watch what's going on here. The craft is clocking along, 2.2 kilometers per second. It's over Kerbal India. It's in the middle. Now it's over the edge. And what I'm going to do is launch right now. Throttle up, SAS engaged, panel's already locked, press bar, the space bar to go to space, and there we go. I am going to back off the throttle a little bit and use engineer so that we launch at a 1.7 thrust to weight. And here's what we're going to do. we got a normal launch profile, right? All the way up until we get an apoapse of 50. Remember the launch profile? 5,000 meters going straight up at 150, 160. 10,000 meters going straight up at 260, 250. Start the gravity turn at 10,000, burn it at 45 degree angle until you get your apoapse. I know that's not the most efficient burn. I know that there are better ways to do it, but that's an easy one to remember. You got 5,000, you got 10,000, you got 45 degrees, you got 50,000. They're just easy numbers to remember. Um, so that's why, even though that may not be the exact perfect gravity turn, um, that is what I do again and again and again, just because it's easy to execute, it's easy to remember, the numbers click. So, we just passed our 5,000, we were going just about 160. Remember, I'm going to do the gravity turn before I talk about this. We continue to go straight up until we get to 10,000, and when we get to 10,000, we want to be going about 260. If I remember correctly, we're going to be doing like 277 or something. A little too fast, but that's okay. Well, let's see what we got. So there's 10,000 at 272. Turn east, press the D key. And lean over until you're pointing at 90 degrees. And let's go look at the map and see what's happening. And again, we want to stay right on that east line, that 90 degree line. We want to stay right on the line because if we go north or south, if I, if I point... It's not really north or south, I guess. But uh, if I point up or down, that's going to change our inclination. The space hags like this, we don't want to be in an orbit like this. We want to be flat with the space hag to do this rendezvous. But since we're doing it live, we can definitely... Uh, fix things later. Let's go over to the map and check out what's happening. It was over Kerbal India. We were going straight up. While we were going straight up, it crossed that entire body of water, right? It's clocking along at 2.2 kilometers per second. We are burning up and at an angle here, and we are just trying to now let it keep coming this way while we go up. It's basically a freaking basketball is flying over your head and you're trying to throw a baseball and hit it at an angle. And let's see how close we can get that. I'm just burning up. I've got that set as my target. Why do I feel like my apoaps just died? That was my kicker stage, that's why. Okay. There we go. I keep burning, and we're going to do this fast. We're doing it live. But watch what happens. I'm going to keep burning until I... There we go. There's my node. I'm behind it, so I need to burn down. I need to get there faster. So what I did, I just turned to burn straight at the horizon, and that's going to get me there catching up. I need to go faster and faster so that as we're going up, we're also catching up with it and stop. So there we have a 3.5 kilometer separation when we get there. We can't rest yet though. Check this out. Our relative target velocity, 938 meters per second. It's only going faster. So we need to, and remember, we got a really good encounter. Remember the green thing over the pink thing, the green X over the, the pink Y or whatever? We are going to have to continue doing this. We're going to have to continue this Delta V because this rendezvous is going to be in a minute 20. So I better start burning. Let's burn straight at it. Right like this. Same rules apply. Try to push the green X to the pink Y. It's going to be a little bit off. That's okay. Just try to push the green X to the pink Y and keep burning for all you got. What happens a lot here is you don't have enough thrust to weight. And because you don't have enough thrust to weight, that thing goes shooting over your head. You just can't bleed off that speed fast enough. All right, that looks pretty good. You can't bleed off the speed fast enough. And because of that, let me see what we're doing here. Because you can't bleed the speed off fast enough, it goes flying past you at a, like a kilometer per second. And you're just not able to do that rendezvous because you don't start burning fast enough. I am trying, just pushing the green thing to the pink thing. Now I'm going to burn straight at it. All right, when it gets away, just try to push it again. Keep hovering over that. Watch what that separation is going to be. Oops, we lost it. That's okay. It just thinks that this is going to be the node. We know we're very close. Now I've got it down to 400 meters per second. That's something I can deal with. I'm going to go ahead and that's a minute out. Let's plan a node really fast. 
give a lot of velocity just to get us close. That's close enough. The only reason I did that, we need another 418 meters per second. That burn's going to take us 27 seconds. So I need to start that burn when we're at about minus 15. And watch this. That ship's coming up our tailpipe here. The Duna Space Hag is still closing on us at 0.4 kilometers per second, 416 meters per second. The rules don't change. We're pushing the green X over the pink Y. That's all that we're doing. But I need... I don't even really need that note anymore. I just know that I need to half this burn time. And since the burn is about 30 seconds, we're going to start burning about 15 seconds. In fact, let's get rid of the node. And when that says T minus... Oops. Uh, let's burn in two seconds. I didn't need to get rid of the node. Now I'm going to burn. It's about 15 minutes away from where that node was. My bad. Again, I'm pushing. Check it out. I'm just pushing the green X over the pink Y. That's what you got to do. Now I'm burning straight at it. Remember, as long as that green X is over the pink Y, we're going straight at it. Just keep burning. It's still coming up our tailpipe. Just keep freaking... Hey, Langerson Mash. I'm going to do the rendezvous and read out the shout out. Thanks a lot for uh, the follow on Kerbal Space Academy here. It's still coming up our tailpipe at 45 meters per second. Push the green X over the pink thing. Now we're just going to loiter because it is basically coming up our tailpipe. We've got a 2.4 thrust to weight. That means that we can kill off that remaining 40 meters per second really quickly. If, you're, if you've got a nuclear engine on this stage, nuclear, if you've got a nuclear engine on this stage, if you have a nuclear engine on this stage, <laughs> now I'm not even going to be able to say it right because I made fun of it. Um, you may not have that thrust to weight, and if you don't have that thrust to weight, you're going to have to start burning a lot sooner. But uh, we have a really good thrust to weight, according to Engineer here, 2.4, and we can just coast until this encounter right here, 1.9 kilometers. Let's, uh, let's let it get closer to us. I'm just going to time warp and let it slide up our tailpipe. Don't be making jokes. It's rocket science, not preschool. There you can see, remember the same thing, right? We've got dorsal on our craft is down in this instance. And we're going to, because we're passing backwards, we're going to be going on the outside of it. Let me put dorsal up and you'll see that we're actually going on the inside of it. There we go, dorsal sides up. You can see we're going to be missing it. It's going to be over here. We're going to be passing it like this. Check out this curve. I totally wish I had like a John Madden marker I could draw on here with. Um, we're going to be missing it like this. So what we need to do is burn and push the green X over the pink Y. And now, stop. Now we're going towards it, 24 meters per second. Green X is over the pink Y. Now we're going straight at it. We're not going to miss it like this. We're going to go straight at it. In fact, what's the encounter going to be? Map says 0 0.1, 0 0.3, so pretty close. So we changed that encounter down. We didn't even look at the map. All we did was point the green X over the pink X. The green X over the pink Y is what I meant to say. There it is again. That should give us a really solid encounter. Point one. I'll take it. I'm just going to point retrograde, and I'm just going to coast on home. So, here we go. Oh, I brought the payload again. <laughs> Oops. I didn't mean to bring the payload again. Did somebody say that in chat? <laughs> because uh, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to take the payload off. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. We can refine this some again. Uh, I'm supposed to be going 5 meters per second, so I better burn. I can do that at the same time as I bend the orbit. So, here's another thing. The further off axis I point, the further away from the green X I point, the more I move the green X. So if I point right here on the green X, it's barely going to move, but the velocity is going to change. If I point way over here, like 90 degrees away from the green X, then the green X is going to move, but my target velocity is not barely going to change. You can see now I actually pushed it over, so I'm going to miss it on the other side because I burned so far over. But uh, the closer you are, the more this number will change and the less the green X will move. The further away you are, the less or the more the green X will move and the less the relative velocity will change. That's how that green X works. Just got another follow. Wow, I really need something that pops up over here, and I totally appreciate the follows. Let me see if I can catch it. Darth Balan. What's up, Darth Balan? Thanks for following Kerbal Space Academy. What just happened? Why did it go to orbit? I guess I clicked accidentally. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and close us down. That's three. That's two. We're just going to go ahead and slide to a stop. I love you, engineer. I hate to kill you. I hate to snuff you out. 
but we're just going to slide to a stop next to the space hag over here. Now, the interesting thing, hmm, <laughs> we'll, t yeah, that is why I wanted to stop by the bab. <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> Uh, I do, oh, wow, I can't dock with that piece of junk here. Hmm. 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 I don't want to leave space junk, though. I don't want to take it home with us. Because if we take it home with us, we were already too heavy last time. We needed more chutes. Let's figure out what we're going to do with that piece of space junk. Maybe we can demonstrate something. Maybe we can demonstrate something with this space junk. I'm going to do this. I am going to... I've made the rendezvous, right? We could go to the dock, but we have the docking adapter here that has the Clampatron regular size docking port on it. We don't need this thing. It's a piece of junk. I'm going to toss it and let it burn up in the atmosphere because I don't want it to stay in orbit. In order to do that, I've got to do a couple things. I've got to bring the entire craft out of orbit so that its orbit is going to intersect in impact curve and get into the atmosphere, basically. Then I've got to ditch the space junk. I've got to ditch the adapter. Then I've got to flip around and catch up with this thing again. We can totally do that. We're not even going to spend that much Delta V doing it. Um, what is my Delta V? 862. It takes about 100 to deorbit. It takes about 100 to get back up to the speed. So watch this. Watch what we're going to do. We are going to say, hey, we've rendezvoused. We're going to be right back here. Don't worry about it. We just have to ditch this piece of junk. Um, spin the ship and release it. Yeah. <laughs> New target for the claw. Uh, since I'm already attached to it, I'm just going to ditch it. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this from the map first. I'm right here. I've already got a good, got a good target. I am going to burn. Where am I? I'm there. Okay. I'm going to burn until my periapse is under 20,000. Done deal. Burned. I'm going to go back here. Now the craft and the piece of space junk are going to go to 20,000 feet. I'm going to decouple that piece of junk. I'm going to flip around. Oh, watch this. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm going to point straight at the pink thing. Remember? My target relative velocity, that was 71 meters per second. It's going away. I need to catch up. Look at it leave. Let's catch up. So I'm going to burn straight towards it. I'm going to keep burning straight towards it until I'm about 50 meters per second. There we go, 50 meters per second. Now I have left the space junk behind. Its orbit is going to intersect Kerbin right like that. We got rid of it. And we're catching up. Let me get rid of the space junk. We're catching back up to our target. So I kicked that 60 meters, or sorry, I kicked the uh, 50 meters per second of velocity. We're catching up to it at that rate. Whoa, I better turn around because I'm going to need to slow down. There it comes. Let's see, let's see how close we can time this. And stop. There we go. We're back to the space hag. We're not even going to quite run into it. Let's kill that relative velocity like that. And we're back. So, we totally deorbited the space junk. I did a trick. And I don't want it to confuse anybody. A lot of people think that this target marker, the way that it works, is that if I point at it and I burn, I'll go to the target. Orbits, much like windmills, do not work that way. You can't just always point at the pink thing and burn and end up at the target. If it's here, if it's straight above you, and you're down here and you burn straight up at it, your orbit's going to go like, whew, this, while it keeps going in a circle around Kerbin. You can't always just point at the pink thing and burn to get towards your target. But thus, why did it work? That's what I just did. I just pointed at the pink thing and I burned. The only reason that worked is because we were in that same orbit just behind it. So if I was above it or below it or inclined off of it, left, right, something like that, I couldn't have just burned straight at it like that. But because we were basically in the same orbital position, just trailing behind it a little bit, I was able to burn straight at it and catch up to it. And basically, we burned and we caught up with it that way. If I was up here and I burned straight at it, it wouldn't have freaking worked. We would have gone shooting past it and hit Kerbin. And if I was down here, we would have gone shooting into space. I don't even know if you can see my hands. I need like a bounding box so I know where I can put my hands. But the only reason that worked, hey, Claude Henry Smoot, thanks for the follow. <laughs> Um, the only reason that worked is because we were here with it. 
We slowed down, but we were in the same orbit. And then we burned straight at it to catch back up in the same orbital trajectory, I guess you could say. That's the only reason that worked. Don't go into space and think that you're just going to light your rocket, point it at the pink thing, and make a rendezvous. Because it doesn't work that way. And I, I really think that that's a big thing that confuses people out of the gate. They're like, wow, I got this target marker and I can't freaking get caught up. What's going on? Uh, it's because you have to be in very specific positions in order for it to work. I am dorsal down. That's why I feel upside down. Now I'm dorsal up. Remember, we put the uh, we put the Mark II spotlight, the little round spotlight on the dorsal side of our craft. And it makes life a lot easier if you know where the dorsal side is. So now I'm dorsal up on the screen. I'm looking at my rocket like this. This is where we're going to go. The target's here. We're going to miss it to the left.